Go to Exodus 12, 38. Now I want to just briefly sidestep with the other nations. Watch this. Because you got Israelite camps that say, other nations can come, other nations can join with us. Those are those assimilated Negroes. Okay. Exodus chapter 12, verse 38. Come on. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks, and herds, even very much cattle. So when the Most High delivered Israel out of Egypt, he killed the Egyptian army. And running at our heels was a mixed multitude of other nations that was in Egypt as well. Now we get to the wilderness. The other nations is hiding was behind us. They there with us. Now watch this. Go to Deuteronomy 28, 43. This is what the Lord told Moses to tell us about these other nations if we break the law. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall... Stop. The stranger that is within thee, meaning that mixed multitude that y'all got back there, the Lord said, I see them, but I'm going to tell you something about them. Read it again. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. Right now, Israel, in the wilderness, you are the top nation. I'm with you. Fire by day, cloud by night. Fire by night, cloud by day. And that mixed multitude that ran out behind y'all, I'm going to tell you something about them. If you break God's laws, the Lord's going to raise that mixed multitude, them strangers that's within you, above you. That's what he's warning us about. We look back at them little nations. <laughs> them dudes back there. Ha! Read. He shall lend to thee. Them strangers shall lend to thee. And thou shalt not lend to him. Uh-huh. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Y'all see that? We didn't believe it. We saw them little ragamuffins back behind us. Said, them guys, them little mixed nations, surely that will never happen. We didn't believe Moses, what he said. Hey, could you read that again, Bishop, real quick? Read it again. I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to show you the, the, the dents of the Negro's brain that try to pervert scripture. Deuteronomy 28, verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. So if there's a knucklehead, a numbskull that's out here trying to push the doctrine to say that Moses was talking about everybody that was there as a group of people, let me just show you how stupid people are. Read. Read it again. The stranger that is within thee. The Most High is making the distinction between Israel and the nations right there. It's letting you know they're not the same. Go ahead. Shall get up above thee very high. Those people shall get up above thee my people distinction go ahead and thou shall come down and you my people shall come down very low shall come down below the other people he shall lend to thee he the other people shall lend to you as my people and thou shall not lend to him and you my people shall not lend to the other people so what in this world would this that shows you how evil can just cloud your brain from common sense and regular straight easy English? Now when we came out of the Persian captivity, once again, Persia gave the Israelites liberty to go back home. You had other nations run behind us too, the same way. Now go to Nehemiah 13 and 3. It's the same thing, but watch. The yeah. other nations, the other they always ran behind us. Go ahead. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 3. Now it came to pass when they had heard the law that they separated from Israel all the mixed multitude. You see that? Now it came to pass when they had heard the law that they separated from Israel all the mixed multitude, meaning we separated from them. Y'all get to hell away from us. That was our, that was our state of mind. Separation. Separation right there. So for you to now create a doctrine... Yep. And say, bring a mixed multitude with us. No, no, you're wrong. You're in deep error, my brother, my sister. Right, exactly. Now watch this. Give me Exodus chapter 1. Committed to race. Remember what we're talking about. That we are to be committed, loyal, devoted to race. And I'm going to show you some women of the Bible that were devoted, committed, loyal, faithful to their race. And you got a lot of black women that say they believe in the Bible. You're going to find out now they don't believe in this Bible. Exodus chapter 1. 15 to 20. Verse 15. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives. To the who? To the Hebrew midwives. Go ahead. To the of, women. Let's see. Of which the name of one was Shifra, 
and the name of the other of other poor. And he said, when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew woman and see them upon the stools. Because that's how they delivered babies upon stools, not laying on their back. Go ahead. If it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. So the edict, the law was to kill the men children, the males. Go ahead. But the midwives feared God. They were committed to God. Their allegiance was to God. Go and, ahead. And did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. Committed to race. Committed to race. Committed to race. They were committed to God and race. That's what we must see the Bible's talking about. You know this bishop, they didn't give a damn about their own life. Because exactly. they know that their king could put them to death. Exactly. Not, the, not our people today. Not our people today that know that their white man cannot do that now. But they're disgraced against their own race. Exactly. Go ahead. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing and have saved the men children alive? <laughs> and the midwives said unto Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered ear of midwives come in unto them. I'm going to tell you what they really said in the spirit. We committed to God and race. We don't give a damn what you said, Pharaoh. That's really what they're saying in the spirit. Because so, they made that up so Pharaoh could go along with it. They were slick. That's what the Lord is looking for, Read. Therefore God dealt with, therefore God dealt well with the midwives. And the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. That? Because the midwives were committed to God and race, the Most High blessed them. The Most says, I'm going to bless these women right here. They are committed to me and race. That's what I'm looking for. That is deep. Read that again. Therefore, God dealt well with the midwives. Go ahead. And the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. So because of what these righteous Fearing God, fearing sisters did the nation was was multiplied. Right. So if these women were were going to be against God, the nation of Israel would have been wiped out. That's right. That's right. See, sisters don't realize they play a very that, that's, large a, that's, part that's of the reason why I'm reading this. Exactly. When you when you sisters kill your babies, this is this is you're going against what we're reading. Give me Esther nine. Esther chapter 9, verse 29 to 32. Esther chapter 9, verse 29. Then Esther the queen, the daughter of Abiel, Abihel, and Mordecai the Jew, wrote with all authority to confirm this second letter of Purim. And he sent the letters unto all the Jews to the hundred and twenty and seven provinces of the kingdom of Ahasuerus with words of peace and truth to confirm these days of Purim in their times appointed according as Mordecai the Jew and Esther the queen had enjoined them and as they had decreed for themselves and for their seed the matters of their fasting wait and their you crime. see that for themselves and what's that word and for their what and What's that word? Seed. What does that word translate to? Race. Yes, nation is the same thing. Race. It said for themselves and for their race. Go ahead. The matters of the fastings and their cry. And their decree and, and the, the decree of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim. And it was written in the book. You know why I said in the word? It says, and the decree of Esther, because she was what? She was a queen. Mordecai was not. Esther was the queen. And she used her power, her authority to protect her race. That's what she did. That's what God is looking for. That's why she was honored. Okay. I want all you women to understand that thing. Okay. From there, go to the book of Judges chapter 5 verse 7. Judges. Judges chapter 5 verse 7. The inhabitants of the villages cease. They ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. Deborah rose up as a mother in Israel. Okay, she was one of the judges. The Most High used her to protect her race. Read. 
They chose new gods. Then was war in the gates. Mm -hmm. Was there a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? My heart is toward the governors of Israel. Now, that's the part many Christian women ignore. She said, my mind is toward the men of Israel. That's who the governors were. She wasn't disrespectful. She wasn't evil and arrogant. She was in her order. But as the judge, she said, I'm like a mother. I'm going to protect my race. And that's what she did. Read down. Read again verse 9. My heart is toward the governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the Lord. See what she said behind all that? Praise ye the Lord. That's what I mean. Bless ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. She said, I'm a mother in Israel. And as a judge, she protected Israel. That's what she did. Okay. She told the, the sons of Israel where to go. That's what, as a prophetess, the Lord used to where to go, where the battle is going to be heated. Go here. Go there. Okay. From there, go to chapter 4, verse 21 and 22. This is the same thing dealing with Barak and Deborah. Because Barak was a weak brother. The Most High chose him, but he was fearful. He knew Deborah had the spirit of the Lord on her. He said, I'm only going to go to war if Deborah is there so she can tell me where to go. Watch this. And because of that, the Most High told Barak, you're not going to get the victory because of that. He said, I'm going to give it into the hand of a woman because of your weakness. Watch this. Judges 4, 21 and 22. Judges chapter 4, verse 21. Then Jael, Heber's wife. This is, Jael is the one that Deborah prophesied about. Because Barak was weak and fearful, the Lord said, I'm going to use a woman to deliver Israel. Watch this. Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a nail of the tent and took a hammer in her hand. And went softly unto him uh -huh. and smote the nail into his temples and fastened it into the ground. Yes, that must have been a mighty blow. You ever see them pins they hold the tents up with? It was a huge nail like that. When she hit that thing so hard, it went through his head into the ground. She said, Barack don't want to do it. I'm going to do it. The Lord said, you do it, girl. Go ahead, girl. You're good. <laughs> Read that again. It says, then Jael, Heber's wife, took a nail of the tent and took a hammer in her hand and went softly unto him and smote the nail into his temples and fastened it into the ground. For he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. Come on. And behold, as Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him. So he's pursuing his dude, Sisera. Jael said, hey, Barak. The battle's over. The Most High used me to kill him. So what you're running for? What you're, what you're trying to fight for? I got this thing. Read that again, 22. And behold, as Barak pursued, pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him and said unto him, Come, and I will show thee the man whom thou seekest. And when he came into her tent, behold, Sisera lay dead, and the nail was in his temples. Go ahead. So God subdued on that day Jabin the king of Canaan before the children of Israel. Yeah, I see how the Lord used us. So what was she? She was committed to God and race. Committed to God and race. And the Lord used a sister to do that thing. So you sisters, don't sleep on a job the most high got you doing there. Give me the book of Judith, chapter 13. It's very important for you women to understand this thing about being committed to God and race. We've seen some sisters recently run up out of this truth. Not only do they hate God, they hate their race more so than anything. They hate their race. They join with the enemy, with these Christian apologetics, apologists, who hate the black man and black woman, and she's with him. Oh, let's do an interview together. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, I hate, uh, I hate IUIs. They're called, I, no, you hate your race, sister. You hate your race. You hate God. Read that. Judah 13, what do you want, verse 1? I don't know. Let me see, 4 through 9, I think. Judah chapter 13, verse 4. So all went forth, and none was left in the bedchamber, neither little nor great. Then Judith, standing by his bed, said in her heart, O Lord God of all power, Look at this present upon the works of mine hands for the exaltation of Jerusalem. See that? For the exaltation of Jerusalem, her race. 
Go ahead. For now is the time to help thine inheritance. Now is the time to help us, Lord. This is a woman. Go ahead. And to execute mine enterprises to the destruction of the enemies which are risen against us. Which are risen. She didn't say against me. She said against us. Her race. Her race. Her race. Go ahead. Then she came to the pillar of the bed which was at Holofernes' head. And took down his fashion from thence, and approached to his bed, and took hold of the hair of his head, and said, Strengthen me, O Lord God of Israel, this day. And she smote twice upon his neck with all her might, and she took away his head from him. So she cut this dude's head. Off. Yeah, let's get all the hand for that thing. Give hand. Now, you know, she had to have the vision in her mind as she struck that sword on that neck. Twice. Because that's what I'm getting at. Because the first time it didn't go all the way through. Right. It got stuck. She said, eh. And you know the blood went up. <laughs> you like, got to match the bloody that, scene. I, I'm, that's what I'm doing. Right, I want y'all to, to visualize what's happening. She's doing it. She said, it ain't over yet. I got to hit it one more time to get it completely off. So she had to see the vision. She had to see, she had to see what results of cutting his head will do for the nation of Israel. So she said, I must complete it. So she had to look past all of the blood, past all those, the guts and all that spilling, and whack it to get that head completely off. Exactly. Read that again, verse 8 and 9. <laughs> Judah chapter 13, verse 8. And she smote twice upon his neck with all her might, and she took away his head from, from him and tumbled his body down from the bed. Then she pushed his body off the bed. And pulled down the canopy from the pillars. And Anon, after she went forth, and gave Holofernes his head to her maid. She told her girl, yeah, he, you hold this dude's head right here. Jump down to verse 18. She had vision in her mind during the whole deal. Judah chapter 13, verse 18. So now this is what one of the governors said. Go ahead. Then said Ozias unto her. Unto Judith. O daughter. Blessed art thou of the most high God above all women upon the earth. You see that what they said? The men praised our sister Judith. You're blessed above all women on the earth. Why? Because she was committed to God and race. 18. Go ahead. And blessed be the Lord God, which hath created the heavens and the earth, which have directed thee to the cutting off of the head of the chief of our enemies. You killed the chief of our enemies. Read. For this thy confidence shall not depart from the heart of men, which remember the power of God See forever. That? For this thy confidence shall not depart from the minds of men, which remember the power of God forever. Well, how? Through her. Through Judith. Go ahead. And God turned these things to thee for perpetual praise. Let men praise you always for this. Go ahead. To visit thee in good things, because thou hast not spared thy life. See that? You didn't sp she didn't spare her life. She was not afraid for her own life. She put her life in jeopardy for God and race. Go ahead. For the affliction of our nation, but has revenged. What? For the affliction of what? Of our nation. Our race. That's what nation translates to, race. Go ahead. But has revenged our ruin. Walking a straight way before our God. And all the people said, so be it, so be it. I'm not, all Israel yelled out, so be it, so be it. Because Judith honored and was committed to God and race. Understand that thing. Them the sisters we want here in IUIC. Any little, what do I call that? It, the, listen, any sister, if you ain't walking in these footsteps, if you know that you really, uh, uh, what do they call it, a chicken head, bye-bye. Bye-bye. We, you can go. There are other Israelite camps out there who love chicken heads. We don't. We're looking for that Judith woman, that Esther woman, that Shifra and Pua woman, that sister that love God and race. That's who we're looking for. That's who the Lord is looking for. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries.
where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.